how we can create a custom package in Unity. And this is because I've been telling you to copy and paste or drag and drop files over and over and over for different tutorials that I've been covering. And I know many of you need something like this to basically organize and architect your code a lot better, basically keep things cleaner and then just have maybe a team that specifically works on one area of your code versus having everything in the same code base or in the same Unity project. So I'm gonna show you how you can create a custom package in GitHub, how we can make changes to the package. So we have a lot to do today. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. I have a project here that I already created and this is to basically mimic having a project. Let's say that you have a game right now or an application and you're thinking that some of the code and some of the textures, the prefabs that you are reusing or perhaps somebody else is gonna work on it or a different team is gonna work on it. So you might want to start thinking about how do you, you put that into a package, right? And that way we can have the DL that Unity generates automatically, you know, having the code that you want to have in there that is, you know, pretty unique and specific to the experience versus the DL that we're gonna have that we're gonna be sharing across multiple projects. So that's kind of the idea. It's having this package that you can clone just pretty similar to how you do other packages in Unity. You go into the package manager, and then if you want to install mathematics, if you want to install shader graph, and so on, basically you go in here and then you click on install, right? So if I were to go into the unit registry, there's a lot of packages in here that I haven't installed yet. So I could install them. I can look at the history. I can look at some of the dependencies. So we're going to have that as well today. And I'm also going to have examples. So I'm going to show you how you can build examples. Maybe you are in one department and then you're, there's a different team in another department and you want to show them how to create those samples. So this video is going to help you in creating packages and samples for those packages as well. So we have a lot to do. So the first thing that I'm going to do though is I want to show you what I have, right? So I have the assets folder in here and then there's a core, there's a singleton, a singleton per system, utilities for different things that I use over and over and over. For instance, I use the spatial logger a lot. So I have it in here. And in the past, I had to copy and paste this folder and also other different components that I would share with the community a lot. And, and it was okay. I mean, we it's just a prototype, right? But for a bigger company or maybe a team that wants to you know, optimize their time in future projects, I think doing something like this, it's going to help a lot. And it also, also makes you, I don't know, I think it's also cooler because it makes you think more about the architecture. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start moving some of these things in here. There's materials, there's models, and there might be things in here that you don't want to move, right? Because they're very specific to your Unity, you know, game or application that you're building. So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna start with the creating a new folder here. So just pretend that this is what you're doing. And you can do this with your own project to follow along. So I'm gonna say learn XR core. That's where all my different packages and well, basically resources are gonna live. So we're gonna go ahead and move the core to that folder. I'm also going to be moving materials, models, physics, prefabs. Basically, it's going to be a lot of the things that I have in here, except a few items, which I'm going to show you what those are. So let's just wait here for Unity to reload. These are just different scenes that I have in here that they could be your game, right? Your game scenes, shapes with rotator. And they're just different scenes that I'm going to be moving to a samples folder. So for now, we're just going to leave it in here. And then this is gonna be a script too that is, is only specifically for some of the scenes that I have in this example. And then settings, I don't wanna move any of the settings. And then Text Mesh Pro, it's also not going to be something that I wanna move because I wanna add that as a dependency. So anyway, so we have this, so now how do we share it, right? So the first thing that I want you to do though is we're gonna go ahead and right click on it in here in the Explorer. And you can do it this way, or you can also open, if you wanna open writer, so we can do that as well. And I can show you both ways, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna be creating a packages folder, a packages JSON, 
So what I'll do here is we're gonna have the, basically the package created in here. So you can go here into opening terminal and then create it by using, basically if you have VS Code, you can do it this way, or if you have Vim or any other editor. I'm gonna stick with using Writer for most of this. That way everything is consistent throughout. So, so what I'm gonna do is if you look at Writer, it has a terminal and Visual Studio, if you're using Visual Studio or any other editor, they also have that as well. We have the resources in here, but we haven't created a package that JSON file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say code and then that. All right, so now if we go in here, you're gonna see you know the core folder and basically everything that the package is going to have. So what I'm gonna do is I want the root, basically the package to be at the root. So I'm gonna say, this is going to be my package and then package that JSON file. And then I think that one is at the root. Yeah, it looks like it is. I'm also, I also have the meta files in there, which is, which is fine. And then what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna have basically a couple of things in here that I'm gonna copy and paste. So for me, learn XR, it, learn XR core, it's going to be basically the package. If you had something for you, it could be basically, normally this is a kind of like a domain name. It's a reverse domain name and it starts with com and then basically what you want your package to be. And then in my case, this is gonna be for my, my core utilities. And then I'm also going to have a version. So if you wanna use, you know, version 1.0.0, you can start with that. Then the display name and then basically a description that, you know, describes what the package is intended for. You can also designate what version of Unity this is going to be available from. So if your package supports you know, Unity 2019, you can do that. And then anything beyond that, it's going to be also supported. And then I also have the actual release, which in my case is gonna be the zero F1. If you're using a beta version, if you're using F2 or F3 and so on, you can always look at those. And you can actually look at those. If I open up, let me just open the archiving here. And if you wanted to know, you know, what the versions are and then you know, all the different things that Unity provides, all the different archives, you can always go in here and then look at the, you know, the version of Unity that, you know, you're going to be supporting. And then also the, well, this is gonna be the actual major ver version. And then this is gonna be kind of like the lower version. So the unit release is going to be this part, and then the unit version is going to be that part. So you can always look at these list to kind of understand what version you want to support. In my case, I think going with 2021.3, I already tested it, it works well with that, so I'm gonna leave it. You can also have a documentation URL in there, also the author, in my case, my name, the email, and also the URL. And then also what dependencies this library is going to have. In my case, I want to use basically Text Mesh Pro so for Unity. So I put that in here because that's going to be one of the dependencies that one of the loggers that I have in here is going to need. In fact, if I go in here on the utilities and I go to the special logger, and go ahead and close out of this, you're gonna see in here that my special logger from the core requires basically Text Mesh Pro. If I don't do that, it's going to error out. So you want your package to be basically getting the dependencies that it needs so you have a good experience when downloading. All the people that use your package are going to have a good experience, right? And then in this case, you also want to make sure that the package naming here, it's going to resemble basically, you know, your namespace. So I try to use namespaces as much as I can so that we don't have collisions with namespaces or with classes that live in Unity. So if Unity, for instance, I had an issue in the past where this was named logger and Unity has a logger. So then you have to worry about, you know, adding an alias here for the using and then it just becomes a pain because you have to be thinking about those things. So using namespaces is a lot easier. And then I also try to avoid using names that Unity uses so that we don't have any kind of collision, so we don't have to add any, you know, aliases in here for those namespaces. So anyway, so that's how that's going to work. So if I go back into the package, this is going to be the package, and then I have the dependency in here. There's gonna be other things in here that we're also going to be adding, but for now, I think this is going to be just fine. So that's gonna be the package. So now let's go ahead and close out of this, and then we can just make this a little smaller and then minimize it. 
So that should now be showing up in here, right? As a package and you can kind of see it in here. It'll show better once we bring these as a package from Git, but for now, that's how that's going to, that's how, that's how uh, you see, I make mistakes. <laughs> that's how that's going to work. So the next thing is right click on Learn XR Core, and then we're gonna be adding an assembly definition. So just click on that. And then this one I normally name, you know, as close as I can to the namespace that we added. So I'm just gonna say, it's gonna be Learn XR. So Learn XR and then that core. So you can name it that, and then just hit enter. I also look at, if you wanna look at standards though, you can always expand packages in here, and then just look at how Unity is doing some of theirs. If you look at it, they have a runtime folder, which in fact I need to add. And then you can see here that their assembly definition starts with capital letters, and it kind of mimics, you know, the namespace for that library. So if I go back in here, I notice that we have an issue, and that issue is that I need to create a runtime folder because it's gonna be scripts that are gonna be needed at runtime. There's also, you can also do one for editor. And in fact, if I go in here and do editor, and then normally this is going to be the, basically the structure is you're gonna have all of these ones in the runtime folder. And then if you had any editor scripts, they basically will go under the editor folder. So for now, I think we don't, we don't have those. I just wanted to show you those. And then I'm also gonna show you the, the file, the folder structure that you could start to look at. You can look at the package layout. In that package layout, it's gonna basically describe what is needed. So in our case, we have the root, which is learn, learn XR the core. Then we have the package. Then if you wanna add a readme file, you can do that. If you wanna add a change log so that you can tell whoever is using your package, what has changed or has, has been added, a license, and then editor scripts will go in there, any runtime scripts, which is what we're gonna be doing, it's gonna go in there. And then if you have tests to basically test your package, this is going to be under a test folder. And then you'll have basically those two folders in there as well. And then samples are going to be at the same level as the root, basically as the child of the root. So we're gonna be doing that too, so I'll show you how that works. I recommend looking at that. I also recommend looking at the package manifest documentation from Unity. And they have a lot of different documentation in here that is going to describe exactly what, you know, what's each attribute it's going to, it's going to mean or it's going to do. So let's go ahead and minimize that. We don't need that. So the reason why we need to, basically we have an error here is because some of the, the, one of the classes is using Text Mesh Pro and I haven't really added all the dependencies that I need for the actual assembly definition. So there's one thing that we need to do in here to, to fix that. So you're gonna go ahead and click on this assembly definition reference. And this is a little bit different than a, than a dependency because this is going to be, when this gets generated, there's going to be a learnxr.coreDL that gets generated when you build it. And what's gonna happen is this is gonna have to reference a DL and that DL is going to be the Text Mesh Pro DL. So you need to specify also an assembly definition reference. So I'm gonna go in here and then if I do tag text, you're going to be able to see that one for Text Mesh Pro. And then you can also in here, there's multiple options that I won't cover today, but you can also designate here like what platforms these package is going to be supported on. In my case, it's gonna be any platform, uh, at least at least for now, and then just go ahead and click on apply. So once you hit apply, then it should be referencing the, the right, you know, the right library and then, or assembly, and then yeah, looks like the error just went away. So it looks like we should be good to go with that information. So the next thing that we need to do though is we need to also create a new repo because I think as far as I know right now, and there's one thing that I don't like doing, and this is using GUIDs. I don't really like to use GUIDs for assembly definitions. And let me show you why that is. Let me see if I can open. I'm gonna go ahead and open coding here. And, or I can actually use, I could actually use a writer as well. But anyways, we are in code, so let's go ahead and use that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and expand this. And then if you look at the assembly definition that we just created, it has basically the name of that assembly that it's gonna generate and then also the references to Text Mesh Pro. I don't know, I think I think using GUIDs is not a good practice. 
because if in my in my mind if that changes it's gonna break things so i like using names in in my case so what i'm gonna do though is i'm gonna go ahead and minimize it minimize this as well and then if you uncheck this and then we hit apply we can go ahead and go back in here and now you can see that the unity text mesh pro name it's in here instead of using a gui Okay, so the next thing that I'll do is if we go under the, basically let's go ahead and go to Chrome or your favorite browser, and I'm gonna go to GitHub, so just make sure that you sign in to GitHub. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new repo, and you can do this with, basically with GitLab, you can do this with any other, you know, repo or, or project management tool, version, version control tool that supports Get, but in my case, I'm using GitHub. I think that's, you know, makes more sense because a lot of people use it. So I'm gonna say the repository name is gonna be LearnXR Core, and I'm gonna call it Playground. So you guys can look at this once I'm done. And then we don't need a description in this case, and then everything else should be okay. We can just leave it. So it's gonna be LearnXR Core, the Playground. So this is going to be where you're going to be storing your shared library, your shared package that you're going to either share with other teams or use for yourself for future projects. So let's go ahead and create a Git repository and then go into assets. And then this is gonna be the basically where the Git repository, the local repository is gonna be. And then now I should be able to see a Git, there we go. So you have to create the, the actual local Git first. Normally I do it with the, with the terminal. I do a git in it and then I do everything through the command line, but I wanted to use writer in this case to just to keep things a lot easier. And then what you gotta do though, is if we go here under remotes, so we can say manage remotes and then we're gonna add a new URL. So that URL is gonna be the URL that we get from, from here. So I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this right here, it's going to be my remote. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. And now that's going to tell, you know, Git that there's going to be a remote that is going to have a name of origin. So that way we can push that code or code to that repository. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, go ahead and go into the actual file changes here where it says commit. And we have all of these different files that we need to commit and basically push. But I want to add a git ignore before we push everything in here that I have. And I think it's fine for this library. I don't know that I'm gonna put anything that I don't want to have committed. So if you wanted to add a git ignore, I think it's it's fine in your case. Let me go ahead and minimize out of this. I think in my case, I'm just not going to add a git ignore. I don't think it's really needed. So I'm gonna say that I want to add, add all of these changes and I'm gonna say it's gonna be initial package files. And then we can go ahead and just push this up. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say commit and push. And now it's going to tell me here what basically what files we're gonna be pushing. So basically it's everything that is in that folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, yep, yep, let's go ahead and push those files. And then in the meantime though, if we go here to a repo and we do command R, now you're gonna see that we push everything. I don't know that we need it, I get ignore. And in my case, I don't think I need one, but basically everything is going to be in here. I have another repo where I did add a, uh, get, I always add a get ignore because there's things that I don't want to include in get that are basically temporary files and things like that. So if you look at this one, which is the real one that I use for my projects, you can see here that I have an example of a get ignore file in, in this case, but in your case, I don't think you need it, at least not for the demo that we're working on. Okay, so it looks like this is good to go and we have, everything in here and what i want to do though is that now that we have everything pushed i want to be able to use the files from the remote basically from our package in unity so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and close out of this we can yeah, actually just close out of unity and i'm going to go into the file system into my assets here and i'm going to go ahead and remove this folder completely and i think it might be used by these files so we need to close out of this and then I'm also going to close out of this basically close out of everything that way we don't have any references to that folder anymore looks like I got everything closed and then just go ahead and try again and now it should be completely gone right we have a project that doesn't have the dependencies that it needs so what I'm going to do though is I'm going to go back into unity and I'm going to go ahead and open it 
I know it's not gonna work because there's a lot of dependencies that came from the Linux R core. The, okay, there we go. So we're gonna say ignore because I want to open the project and I want to add a new package, right? There we go. And everything in here is gonna say, oh, I'm missing because we did delete this folder completely, right? There's really all of these prefabs and everything, it's gone. So there's gonna it's gonna be magically fixed here. And we're gonna go into the package manager here and then we're gonna go ahead and say, well, I wanna add my package that I just created and then just click on add. And then once you click on add, it's gonna basically pull all those dependencies that we added to get into this project. And now it magically it's going to work. Hopefully we have, let's see, this is fine because it's where the errors before we had any issues. I'm gonna go ahead and save and then make sure that everything is clean. So it looks like everything is clean and I could test my game. In my case, this is a very simple example, but these shapes are going to start rotating. And I know that this is working and, and using my dependencies because if I click on one of these and I were to click on this rotator, it's gonna say, oh, I'm gonna go to packages, I'm gonna go to learn XR core, runtime, and I'm gonna try to pull its code, right? And I can double click on it and that's going to be opening writer and we're gonna be able to see that code that it's available there. So this all came from our library, right? Like if I hover over here, we should also be able to see where that came from. It's in the package cache, com, learn XR, that course. So all of that is working good. And I just got a couple of things in here that we shouldn't worry about. Just gonna go ahead and close out of it. So everything works, right? And we can just leave it. Looks like it's still installing a few things. And if I go into, so that's one of the scenes. If I go into logger, I know that this uses also my special logger, which which comes from that same package. We can go ahead and hit play, and you're gonna see that it should start printing different information because I'm using uh, a runner that it's going to be printing that every second. So if you look at the runner here, which is happens to be part of the project, you can see here that it's gonna be running this enumerator every one second, and then it's gonna randomly generate a number from zero to two is excluding three. And then depending on the number, it's going to add either a warning, uh, an, an actual information or an actual error. So I know this is working and it's coming from that. So we have a package that we can reuse in multiple projects, which is awesome. So another thing that I wanna show you though, is that we can also build this and then run it. So what I'm gonna do in, and the reason for that is because I wanna show you what happens behind the scenes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open these and then we're gonna go to file. And then I did a lot of experimentation with these yesterday. So I wanted to show you guys how this works. So we have shapes with rotator and this is currently targeting windows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to build here and I'm gonna put this on my desktop and we can just say it's gonna be builds and then we can say, I'm gonna put it in there. Okay, so we have a build and we could, you know, basically run this application and it'll run just fine. So if you go ahead and double click on the EXE, everything should work fine if we didn't have any errors on during the build, right? With our assembly. So this is running fine. It is using the package that we just created and then the shapes are rotating. So I know that this is working. So let me go ahead and close it. So another thing that I wanna show you that is interesting though, like if you go here under data, there's gonna be all these different assets which are really not meaningful to you right now. But this part is really meaningful, right? If we didn't create the learn XR core, learn XR that core DL, everything would have been put into this assembly C sharp, which is what Unity will do by default. But there's code in there that I don't want to have in, basically you may want to have unit testing, integration testing in your own DLs, or like I said, multiple times, you may want to have multiple teams working on, on, on that DL, then you can do that. And that's what's happening here. We have learn XR, that core. That's a DL that got generated from our assembly definition that we created here on the runtime, which is this one right here. And then you can also look in here that there's going to be a Unity that text mesh pro. So basically the assembly definition reference is used to reference the text mesh pro DL from within this code. So that's how that works. Otherwise we would get errors and we wouldn't be able to basically make this work. So so that's how that works. So the next part that I wanna show you though is now that we have the, now that we went through that, 
I want to show you how we can create the samples. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and create and change the structure here a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and, in this case, I'm gonna add a folder. And then this one, I'm just gonna say, this one's gonna be called logger. And then we're gonna have here shapes. And then for shapes, I'm going to go ahead and put in both these both scenes. I'm gonna put them under that. And then I'm gonna put that under there. So I want to create a new project. And then this one is going to be the one that we'll use to update the library. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, well, I want to use universal, it doesn't matter. We can just go ahead and download the template. And this one we can just say, it's gonna be learn, learn XR core changes or updates. And then we can just do code and then we don't need to connect anything in there. So that way this project is the one that is referencing that local package. And then the other one is the one that is kind of consuming so think of this as the one that your clients are using and consuming. And then my other one is gonna be the one that the team that is behind the package design, it's working on. So I think I think that actually works. It's gonna work a lot better. So we'll wait for this to finish. And then in the meantime, I think we can just start getting things prepped. So what I'm gonna do though is under assets in here, which is the basically this project right here, we can go under scenes. I'm gonna go ahead and copy these two folders. And then if we go back into the actual code here, then we can also go and wait until we have the other project created. But for that, it's gonna be basically this one right here. So we'll just wait here for that to get cloned. So let's open up a new terminal window. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clone the actual package, maybe to on this folder. So I'll just say CD code and then get clone. And if you remember what the basically this path is going to be, so I'm going to go ahead and basically paste that path in here. And there's multiple ways that you can do this. I think this could be a, a way to do that. So we'll just do that here. Okay, so we have the runtime. And then I'll open up another folder here. And then on the right hand side, and then just go ahead and paste that path. Oh, we can go here under code. Okay, there we go. Computer is a little slower than I am going way too fast. So that's what happened there. So if we go into the project where we have the sample scenes, so which is gonna be this one right here, and then we have these sample scenes. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy those. And then this is a one that where we clone our library or package. So what we need to do though, is this is going to be, there's going to be a samples folder in here that we need to create. So if we create a folder in here, we can say this is gonna be new, and then I'm gonna say folders. And then this folder needs to have that sign. Just make sure that you have that in there. I think that tells Unity not to load it by default because it's going to be imported. And then I can just go ahead and paste these files in here. So now though, we have these files that we can reference and then we can use to basically as examples. And then what I'm gonna do though, is if we go into our package, so let's go ahead and find our package now, which I changed directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, open file. And then in my case, we're gonna go into the actual LearnXR core playground, which is the package that we're storing in GitHub. And now we have these, basically this packaging here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say comma, and then we're gonna be adding all of our packages. We can probably just indent everything in here a little bit so it's easier to see because this is gonna be an array of basically samples. So in this case, this array contains the simple shape sample that basically is going to be this unity scene, also a description. We also have the simple shape sample, which is gonna be basically with the rotator with time. So we can say something like simple shapes, simple shape, simple, let's change this simple shapes and then i think this is fine simple shapes with rotator sample and then i think that looks good and then logger samples and then it contains i think this is all good okay basically you can describe what your different examples are going to be and then maybe we can just indent this a little bit okay so looks like that's good to go and then we should have our samples now all in here so what I'm gonna do though is now we can, we have the, basically the package that we clone here and then I'm gonna go into that 
And then that's what I say, I, I use the command line a lot, but you can use this, you can use Git in Writer to do that by just going into that and then basically pointing Writer to go to that directory. In my case, I'm just gonna do it here because it's gonna be easier. And then we can just go ahead and add our files and then I'm gonna say add a samples and then we can just go ahead and commit. So one more thing before we, we push those changes, let's go back into VS Code. And remember, this was under 1.0.0, but we added sample, so maybe we'll just increment here the version. So I'm gonna say this was incremented to 1.0.1. .1. And then if I do a git status and then git diff, now you can see that the version changed. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And then we can say incremented meant a version due to having samples. And then now we can say, go ahead and, and push those changes up. And then now if we go into GitHub in here and do the command R, now you can see that we have the samples here. And then if I look at the commits, we should be able to see add samples and then basically all the files. And then these latest commit included my version change that we have in here. So now let's go ahead and, so we don't really need this new project, to be honest. You can, if you wanted to add it as a local. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why that's going to be helpful as well. But let me go back in here to the game that we're building or the app that we're building. And we need to update our package now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into package manager and then we have here or 1.00, but I want to get the new changes, right? Because now we have new samples. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say update. So now that's gonna go into basically get, GitHub and then download everything that we just added. And it looks like that got incremented. And I don't see the samples in here. I think it took a little bit of time the other day when I did that. So let's go ahead and go back in here and then package manager. And now we can see the samples. I don't know why that is, but I think the first time it doesn't show it and then it shows it. So basically it just, I think you can play around with that. I think it's something to do with caching, but anyways, you can see samples in here. And what I can do now is I'm gonna go ahead and delete this, right? Cause we don't really need those because we already have, we're gonna have the samples coming in from our package. So I'm gonna say import and then we can also import this other one. And let's see if this works and then chips with rotator does not exist. Okay, so I, I think I have an issue with one of them, but we're gonna fix it. And then this one, got, it's working. So now if I go into the logger 3D, we can, let me go ahead and close out of this, and then we can look at our logger, but that came from the actual package. I can hit play and everything should work, right? So let's just give it a minute here. And then looks like, it's working and then we get errors and then we get warning, so that's awesome. And then let's look at the other sample here. So this one right here, and then I can go ahead and hit play and see what's gonna happen when I hit play. So this one doesn't have rotator, so it's just basically the shapes are still, they don't move. But if I go into the rotator one, now this one should have the, a rotator component that I have in my package. So it looks like that one is working. So I had an issue because the, because of, let's see why that is. I was going to assume why, but let me see. Oh, okay, I see. So I put all the different examples under this folder. So what I can do though, is I can just say this one is going to, basically this one is going to come, but I don't, it's going to come from this directory, but I don't need that though, because we added all the samples under that directory. So technically, we could just go ahead and remove that one. And then we can say simple shapes sample, uh, well shapes uh, with, we can say with rotator, or you can just say simple shapes samples, if you wanna just be plural. I think we can just keep it that way. So we can go ahead and do two here, and then we can, you know, update or get a repo because we had some issues. And then we can just say commit and then update it a bug in package that JSON. And then we can just go ahead and push it out. So now if we go under the actual project that we're working on, we can go into package manager 
and then right now we you know we still have that issue because we haven't really updated it so let's say this updates in real time it might not but we might need to close it and reopen it but we'll find out here in just a minute so looks like it hasn't updated just yet i think it might be because it's still refreshing okay so i'll just go ahead and close it and then go back into the package manager so i think it has to do with the package manager not updating you know unless you close it and reopen it that's that's interesting so you might need to just refresh and then or like close it and reopen it so it looks like we're good and then logger sample we can for some reason we found an uh, an update and then this one gets import and then it looks like we're good to go oh yeah because we updated the version so it created a new version of that so that's cool though that's something that i didn't even think that it was going to happen so anyways i deleted the old one and then now we have the new one and then we don't have any errors right we have two warnings but i don't know yeah i don't think that's anything to worry about and then all of these things should work just fine and then logger sample should also work just fine so the last thing that i want to show you though is why would you need another project like the one that i just created in here so the reason for that is if you want to make changes let's say you want to add prefabs you want to add textures to your project let me show you how we can do that so what i'm going to do is going to be a little bit different than the other one but we're going to add basically a project the the package from the disk instead of from a from a git url and that's going to allow us to make changes on the at the package level and then that way unity can create the meta files and then anything that it needs otherwise you're gonna have a lot of issues so what i'm gonna do here is this is basically our package right so we're gonna go ahead and click on the package json and it's gonna install just like it did with the one from github the difference here though it's gonna say local and that part is really important because it's going to allow us to modify and, and make changes to it so we can go ahead and close out of that so if i were to actually let's go back and then i'm going to show you something here and we still have the samples right so i'm going to go ahead and import those so everything should work just like it did with the other one looks like it detected that we're using text mesh pro so we're going to go ahead and import that into this new project and then we can now look at it and then i think everything should work just fine so let's go ahead and refresh it there we go reopen the scene and then everything should work just like it did before and looks like that it's working and okay we do have an issue <laughs> i just realized that but that's fine this is exactly what we need while we go through this process so it's missing one script right okay so now if you go into the actual package here the project that we've been using to basically to serve as a client that one there was a script in here that i never added to my actual package so and that's basically this logger 3d runner so if i go into here what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say well i need that script right so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna go back into code i'm gonna go into my package i'm gonna go into runtime and this is going to be basically where your core library is going to be so actually let's go back go into samples and the only one that is going to need that script that i just you know that we're missing is going to be the logger so because these are samples you can have in here textures you can have scripts you can have basically a set of resources that that sample scene is going to require so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move the i'm going to move the scripts folder to that and then i'm also going to let me make sure that i think this is going to be the one and then this one is going to be the scripts okay so i have the runner in there and then just make sure that you have the meta files there's one thing that i'm needing now that i didn't copy so we're also going to need the scripts that meta and then let's just put put it in there so now our samples in our learn xr core playground also knows about the scripts so let me go ahead and change and actually let's go ahead and update the version so i'm going to go ahead and update the version here and then go ahead and go back and then status you're going to see that now we have the new script that we added i'm going to go ahead and add it and then i'm going to say add a new logger and then runner script and let's go ahead and hit enter and then we can just go ahead and push those changes so now my samples is going to have a script and that is something that i never moved so that's why that script was missing but the meta files are really really important which is going to basically allow me to explain to you why the other project is needed 
But let's fix the issue that we had in here on the Unity custom. So this one right here, we could also delete in, in our client project. And then it's waiting here for this to finish. And then in fact, I'm also going to be deleting the, the samples in here because we're gonna be importing the new version. So I'm gonna go into package manager and then we're gonna go ahead and updating, updating this. And then, so that kind of walks you through the whole cycle. I didn't expect to do some of the things that I'm showing you right now, but I think that helps. It helps me as well in you know making sure that I don't make those mistakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and import this and import that. And now we have 1.03, which is the new version. Let's wait for Unity to, to reload. And then now we should be able to see here the logger sample and also the script, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and reopen it. And then if I go in here, we have a runner. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And then things should work just fine. Okay, so it looks like, it looks like that's working. In the other case, it was working before because we had the script in this folder. So it wasn't working in the other project because that project didn't have it. So I think we're done with this project. Let's go ahead and close out of this. Let's go to the project that I added the, basically the package as a local package so that I can show you how to fix this thing. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and close and delete that version. I'm gonna go and do exactly what we did before. So in this case, it's gonna be a local package. So it has the actual 1.03 already available because it reloaded it from the file system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and re-import my logger sample here. And then just wait for Unity to recompile. Now it knows that there's a new script. So it's going to try to recompile that. And then we can open that new scene. And then if everything works, we should have our special logger and then our logger 3D runner, which is what we were missing before. So this is working just fine. Let's give it a minute here. And then, so we have a package that works locally and we have a package that works from a remote, which is awesome. A couple of things that I didn't show you though that I'm realizing right now is some of the information that we got on the package is displaying here, right? We got we got learn XR core. And if you were to move this here to maybe to this side, you can see that this is gonna be basically matches that. The version matches that, the name, and then we have also the actual the name of the package is going to be there. And then documentation, this should take me take you to my website. And it does take you to my website, which is which is what I wanted. I mean, in the real scenario, you would put documentation to this, not to your own website. It will be your own website, but a documentation site. And then if I had a change log, it would be here. And then licenses, it would be here as well. So what I want to show you though is, let's say that you wanted to add the package to make changes and you wanted to add a new texture, you wanted to add maybe a new component. So what you could do though, is now we have these right here, just like what we did before. But the difference here though, is we're gonna be able to change some of these things. This was read only, and it is normally read only when you're reading from a remote. So if I go here and, and click on package, you can see that this is basically in the package cache. So it's going to be all read only and you can't really modify anything in here. So the reason why I added a package that was local is so if you wanted to change anything here, maybe you want to increment the version here to be four. Maybe you want to, I don't know, you want to update here the description. This now includes samples. And then you can do, we can do that and then hit apply. Maybe you want to add a new file though. Maybe you want to add a new texture in here or a new script. So we can go in here and then we can say, if we wanted to add another script, we can say here, C Sharp script. Let's say that this was a camera helper of some kind. We can hit enter. And right now it's not gonna do anything, but I just wanna show you that this is going to work. And then in our case, we would wanna add an in space. So we can go here and then we can just copy the in space that we had on the other files. So I can go into assets here and then packages. That's another thing that you can do though, is these, uh, these packages here, are all read only, but this one is not, which is awesome because we can modify it. So we can say core and then utilities. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and then copy and paste the namespace. It's gonna be another utility. And then we'll just go ahead and do tap here. So now we have that new utility that we added. We can just you know, remove 
some of the using statements that we're not using and that we can go ahead and minimize this. But the cool thing with this is adding a meta file behind the scenes and that's gonna be needed on the package. Otherwise it's not gonna work, it's gonna cause problems because Unity needs that when it's retrieving some of the assets so that it knows where the asset goes, what it's connected to. So you can see here now we have our meta file and that is in the playground. So, so let me show you what we can do with this. Now we can go back into here and then status and then we can just, actually I, I, I did update the package. I thought I didn't update the package, but we did. So we should be good to go. And then we can say we add a camera helper, which doesn't really have anything, but it's just an example. And then we can say, this is gonna be give, basically get push. So this come in handy though, because now these, if we go back into our package here, now you're gonna see six commits and now we added a, cam a camera helper. Doesn't do anything, but we have our meta, basically our meta filing here. And then we also got the new changes that I added through the Unity Inspector, which is really cool, right? And then for some reason, it removed this and then it re-added them for formatting, but that's a completely fine. And then, so now this is good. So now let's test it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a different project, which is going to be the project that we're working on. I close it because I didn't think we we're gonna need it, but I think we do need it because we need to update the package. But I wanna show you that we now have the camera helper that we can also use and consume. So now we have our Unity custom package prep, which is basically our client project or the game or app that you're working on. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my package manager here. And then we did push these changes to basically to GitHub. So right now we have version 1.0.3. So let's go ahead and update it. So I'm gonna go ahead and update it to be 1.0.4 and it's installing packages here. And let's just give it a minute. And I think I need to drink some water because I haven't stopped talking. <laughs> since I started this video. And this video is gonna be unedited, so I'm really excited to, to start doing that more often. Okay, so anyways, we can go ahead and look at samples and then I'm gonna go ahead and update the samples. There's a different version of the sample already, that's fine, we can just go ahead and update it and then update it. So we should have the, the new version now. It looks like it deleted the other, the other one, which is fine. And just wait for Unity here to to apply our changes and then version history doesn't show me anything because we don't have a change log, but we do, it does show the new version. And then we have here the changes that we added under the inspector. And then we also have the new version. So we should be good to go. So now if we go into, I'm just gonna reload this and then everything should be working here. But we can now, if I go here, let's say that we added a camera helper to this component, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse everything in here. We should have now the camera helper and it doesn't do anything, but it should work, right? Like it, it is a behavior and it is coming from our package library. So if I were to hit play in here, everything should work. And I think this should wrap up this video with all the information that I wanted to share with you today. So if you guys have any questions about creating packages in Unity, and anything that I mentioned today or any suggestions for future videos. And if you like the way that I'm recording these videos now, let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much guys for your time and don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell because that's gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos in the future. Thank you very much guys.